Hey, Steve. How are you? In hilarious apocalypse news, uh, the landlord has said that they need to do an inspection of my apartment for fire safety issues, so therefore I am wearing an anti-COVID mask. <laughs> Sitting at my desk waiting for the person to show up, because after that my air will be contaminated for a little while. Yep, yep. So that's why I look a little close to apocalyptic today. Well, I know. I mean, sometimes these things come up unexpectedly and you definitely need to have precautions. Gosh. So totally understand. Hi. Hey, folks. Hi. Richie and Bartok and others should be joining soon, so we'll just give it a few minutes for folks to join in. Hi, folks. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Yeah. I would like to start on time, but Bartek isn't here, so and I do suspect he's relevant for the discussion. Looks like he's on now. Oh, there he is. Perfect. Perfect. Um, okay, so Arthur, oh yeah, perfect. So Arthur moved his thing, so we can start right in. Um, just one point of order. I, I read recently um, that most people are at the year of, of being locked in the pandemic for one year now, or close to that point, and that a lot of people are, are hitting... Uh, mental and emotional walls. Uh, I've had a little bit of a fight with someone in Prometheus team last week as well. Um, long story short, um, there's there's humans on all sides of this. Uh, so please be gentle and assume good faith. That being said, let's start. Also, you need to write yourself into the MT attendee log if you want to. Of course, we have way more people than are currently in the list. I'll share the doc once more, and we will be starting with the due diligence. Um, if you saw the channel, there are two new documents or two new uh, uh, statements, work pieces, uh, whichever uh, one by Alalita on the progress of, uh, of open telemetry signals, which we'll be looking at in a second. And by Bartek, uh, basically, uh, I had a discussion with him to try and, and unblock this call a little bit. 
So the thing which we'll be trying is um, to, to detach uh, the discussion points into a distinct statement, uh, which will allow us to walk through the rest of the document, hopefully at pace and just uh, keep resolving issues and, and comments and just finding consensus or uh, finding uh, that we cannot reach consensus. And then it's basically up to the TUC to make a call. Um, but at some point, uh, SIG observability should uh, be done with, uh, with the due diligence document. Um, we are, by, by one call, we are now at the record of, uh, of calls it took to, to get through due diligence. So let's try to not make it too. Oh no, actually just the third call, then we're at, then we're on par, doesn't matter. So, um, the, Steve, do you want to share your screen again for the document? Sure, happy to. Cool. And uh, also I... just to make sure Bartek, um, so my assumption is that you're basing, basically you, you uh, you will make a statement or some such, and then uh, this unblocks the detailed discussion, correct? Yeah, that would work. Okay, so please put that in at some point so uh, so people can see. Um, for now, unless there's, there's something which needs to be actively discussed, which is not covered in that statement, uh, then obviously speak up else. We'll just refer to that statement. So um, the first uh, comment, which is still open, uh, is also from Bartek about uh, forked distributions versus core. I think we can close this yeah. uh, unless Fish is on the call and wants to actively object, but I don't think that is the case. Okay, so Bartek, you're fine because you wrote uh, ACK perfect. Are you good, Bartek? Can we resolve this one? Yeah, um, so Bartek, can we close this? Yeah, I'm just digging. Uh... Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, that was kind of clarification, sure. Thank you. Okay, okay. Well, think, um, let me click, please, so we, we have one um, singular thing. Um, okay, I hope everyone read the um, update by Alolita, which is linked in the next comment. Should I pull that up? Do we want to review that live or how do you want to handle it? Uh, I do hope that people read it because it was shared, um, um, it was shared uh, before, but if, if people need time to read it, uh, then please pipe up. I read it. I think Bartek also read it. I think quite a few people who read it. Um, yeah, so I'm uh, I, I'm happy with this. We we just refer to this document. The one question um, which I would have is for let me mark it here. Steve, can you go into the other document for a second, please? Yes. Um, I think two calls ago, um, it was Steve or Morgan, if I remember correctly, told us um, that the completion is expected for not 2021, but for early 2020. So um, that's the only comment I have. If there's some some uh, link to supporting documentation or how how that half a year speed up um, is is. Richard, um, I can. I can address that, Steve, mm -hmm. if you're, it's okay. Uh, again, that this is based on that specific phase of the data model and the specification being completed. And, um, you know, for that phase, work is already in progress. You know, as, as you can see, drafts are available, mm -hmm. but, you know, the final is not done yet. Uh, and, uh, you know, we are, uh, again, there are different teams, AWS included, who are, adding more engineering to this effort. So hence the expectation of an earlier completion. 
Okay, so for the intents and purposes of the main due diligence document, basically we can assume where uh, stuff was written before that uh, logging is currently not a focus area for this year, that this is retracted and replaced with uh, more resources are being put against uh, the logging signal and component, correct? That's, that's correct. So I just put a comment in, so this is um, persisted. Uh, maybe we can also, or maybe Alalita, you can also put it into the main text, but else I think I this that. is a super decent document. Um, so. Sorry. Dennis. Anything else for this doc, Richie? Sorry, what? Anything Not from my side. This doc? Not from my side. Uh, I would I would propose we just uh, acknowledge it and and accept it with sick hat on and and move on. So let's 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 actually write something in. Okay. The beeping should stop in a second, sorry. You can keep the beeping, it's a nice background. <laughs> no, it's not. It really is not. <laughs> it, it, it really sets some urgency here. Your toast is ready. <laughs> All right, carry on. Yes. Um, so, okay, I just linked it in here, uh, Alolita. Um, Thanks, uh, uh, Richard. And, and... Yeah, thank you. Okay, so we can close this, I presume. Okay, um, we have this dance of partial, um, of finding partial consensus points and working our way forward. Should we still try and do this? Or should, ah, okay, if we go above, um, Bartek copied his thing. Yeah, I kind of copied the statements we were working on in the very beginning, just to have clear, I don't know, expectation, in the very beginning of the document, yeah. Mm. Oh, very beginning, sorry, yeah. where? Oh, right here, uh, I see. That is the very beginning indeed. So I guess one initial comment I'd make is, um, especially when it comes to things like uh, not reinventing the wheel, that goes counter to the CNCF principles. So uh, I'm wondering how we resolve some of that counter. Like it's okay for people to have different opinions, that's fine. Uh, but blocking when it goes directly against the CNCF principles, I'd have a bigger concern with. Okay. Like Can there's no king making that's- Yeah, what exactly- There's no king making in- yeah, the, the no king making rule and the CNCF principles state that you can have two conflicting things and that's okay. If I'm reading this suggestion right, it seems to indicate that like they can't, like you have to use open metrics, you have to use fluent bit, or you have to use something else. That which seems counter to my interpretation of CNCF. Sorry, which exactly point you are referring to? I'll highlight it right here. But you mentioned that this is like a founding goal of open telemetry to do. To support the specification, but using it internally or not having another uh, alternative implementation of it, that seems counter. Like, I guess I'm uh, trying to understand how that meets the criteria for incubation. I can understand that that's kind of an opinion, 
uh, but the CNCF principles don't uh, allow do allow uh, don't allow for kingmaking in the in the sense that there doesn't have to be one solution to a problem. Yeah, yeah, um, I get that. Uh, but as you notice, you know the kind of using open metrics directly, or maybe some suggestions like this. Those are like prefer. So it's not like mandatory for me. Um, however, that you know compatible with Prometheus use was something um, that was mentioned by Open Telemetry, and overall would be nice for users. Um, so that's why you know it fits kind of in this rule. But also the no kings making rule is yeah, it's a rule that says that you know conflicting solutions can be uh, passed to you know further stages, but it doesn't mean they have to be conflicting, right? And they cannot work together. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And I think so like I could hop in here real quick uh, and just mention that uh, in case it hasn't been clarified, like open telemetry is super, super intent on being fully compatible with Prometheus. And we're, we're actively yep. working with Tom Wilkie and Richard Hartman and others to yep. ensure that the metrics work we're doing is going to be something that Prometheus users would, would want to use. So yeah. 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 And in fact, in, uh, I agree. And, and, Bart, uh, Bartek, as you know, uh, again, inviting you again to actively participate uh, in the work group and, you know, the work that is being done, including the designs and the, and the implementation. So, uh, again, you know, please get involved and, and uh, you know, enable this to be done. Right, but like, you ask me to get involved into adding yet another API to overly, you know, kind of complex collector already that I personally would, you know, not recommend. Um, I'm not sure if that's, you know, um, what I can, you know, do. Um, I can make sure to not, you know, we can, you can import Prometheus code. So it's, you know, we are not you know, reinventing everything, but like, it, it, yeah, I'm kind of conflicted here. I'm not sure how should I, behave and uh, that's why i'm putting this very uh, maybe blunt sorry for that but like i don't feel this is a moment a good moment for incubation and by the way um, all the things you mentioned about yes you started uh, working with this uh, with prometheus open metrics to make it compatible so i think that's a great progress however i would see let's meet when done that is done and then we can you know discuss you know incubation maybe that that's my proposal so and by the way this is only recommendation like um, like we will I mean the final decision is on TOC side so that's only the re re recommendation so don't don't be too mad like maybe that's only my opinion so maybe, yeah sir Actually, the uh, work people are not here yet so I can uh, take my mask off so I, you can actually hear me um so I wanted to represent kind of two perspectives here. Number one, with regard to the collector. Number two, with regard to Open Telemetry Go, because I am one of the Open Telemetry Go approvers. Um, so I think with regard to the collector, you know, part of my remit on the GC is to represent kind of the interests of smaller players in the Open Telemetry ecosystem. And what I can tell you is that the collector design is something that is widely adopted by end users because end users favor having one agent that they can run, one agent that can route things, and that it offers significant benefits to end users in terms of, oh God, the uh, noise has started. Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, so it offers significant benefits to end users as far as, you know, being able to route telemetry easily. And, you know, yes, I do have concerns over, you know, code increase in terms of size and complexity as far as memory footprint. But the collector team has shown willingness to, you know, create performance metrics, right, to make sure that people are not uh, adding too much stuff that causes the memory foot footprint to increase. I think, you know, that kind of addresses to me, you know, items number number four and five and in terms of thinking about, you know, who is the collector serving? What purpose does it serve? Is it fit for purpose? I feel like that, you know, the end user adoption and people successfully using the open telemetry collector to route telemetry to multiple providers, to internal open source backends, as well as to vendors. I think that's a sign of, of, of it doing what it's supposed to rather than something that is, uh, that is not fit for purpose. With sorry, just a quick, quick question of clarification. When you say the collector is like what people want, you mean the model of a collector and not this specific collector, right? I just want to make those two things distinct. 
Sure. Um, but I think it's hard to disentangle these things, right? Like people want a collector that is configurable with YAML, right? That they can basically oh, well. configure at, right? Like, or right, like configure with a config file, right? Rather than having to yeah. make code changes, right? That is the weakness mm -hmm. of the SDKs is that you have to make code changes to change where the telemetry routes, right? And the collector yeah. addresses that fairly well. You know, yes, you could probably, you know, we could nitpick the design of the collector to death, right? Like, but the, at the end of the day, the collector is a thing that is widely deployed and seems to broadly mm. work. The model, I agree. The implementation, I don't, but just- Well, I, <laughs> are you going to insist that we rewrite the collector as our, you know, as, as a, as a incubation criteria, right? Like, you know, I appreciate the feedback, right? Like number one, right? Like, uh, you know, yes, if there are su su reports from users of saying, you know, we had to move back to open tracing and we can't use Hotel Go because of memory leaks and performance issues, right? Like, okay, this is kind of the first that I've heard of this, right? Like it's something that I will take back to the Hotel Go team and that we'll investigate seriously, right? Like if you can link us some specific reports and issues that have been filed, I'm happy to look into this. Right, but that's at least a little bit more specific feedback than kind of, you know, the uh, we don't like the hotel collector design. Well, you know, we need something to fill that gap, right? Like that, that it works in practice at production scale for like, you know, dozens of users, if not hundreds of users, yeah. right? Like the, it's I, harder to say like, like, you know, that that we should rewrite the hotel collector design just because, you know. Right, so I, I think I'll just say this and I'll butt out completely. I think the one thing that's underlying a lot of these conversations is this like more core and abstract thing, which is that I think a lot of people think the scope of OTEL collector and really all of OTEL is simply too large and that anything produced in the scope is not going to be ideal for anyone, right? And so everything flows out of that. If you don't believe that, then nothing makes sense. If you do believe that, then it, yeah, that's the core disconnect here, I think. So I think the yeah. thing that's key though, know, as you said, it's not going to work for anyone, but based on the fact that there are adopters, it does work. I mean, so yeah, I'd also separate, separate out like uh, I'd also separate out like opinions though from due diligence. Like for due diligence, does the answer to that question matter? Like that's not a criteria unless I'm missing something. Well, it's like what direction should the CNCF be going in, right? Uh, I think that is completely valid, right? I think part of the job of this process is to say this is or isn't architecturally, conceptually, what we want to point towards. I think that's valid. It doesn't have to be motivated by specific use cases and memory leaks and stuff like that. I think the time for doing this kind of work is now. So I, I just want to jump in for one, I'll stop raising my hand. Um, so like, it's a little ironic in my mind. Well, actually, I, I don't want to be too confrontational. But I, I see your point, Peter. Um, and actually in some ways in a past life, I agreed with it in the sense that creating open tracing specifically was meant to be a narrower scope. So we did that. Um, and then ironically, the CNCF like brokered the process literally to create a broader scope because that is absolutely what we heard from people out there, like not like vendors, but end users that they wanted to have a single surface area for telemetry integration. I would absolutely agree that the scope of open telemetry is extremely broad. And I think one of the founding principles of the project is to try to be modular about it as much as we can. Um, I think the modularity runs into some fundamental issues in the collector, um, but I would also argue very strongly that the collector and open telemetry themselves are not like super tightly coupled. Like it's possible for open telemetry to succeed and to use open telemetry without adopting the collector. Um, and that's a mandatory thing as, as far as the charter of the project is concerned. Um, so I guess I would argue that for people who don't like the fat dependency in the collector, don't use it. The open telemetry project does not require the use of the collector. And I think that seems to be the focus of a lot of these discussions. The idea of a single instrumentation API um, that just describes the process of what's going on in the software and then emits relevant telemetry is what actually really led to, I think the realization from folks in the open tracing side that something like this was necessary. So the, I'm not saying that your opinion, which I assume is your opinion, I mean, you phrase it as a question, but I think you've made your opinion clear. I'm not saying it's invalid. And, and I actually, as I, I think the point I'm trying to make is at times I've agreed with it. I think that what I learned from the open tracing project primarily was that it actually isn't what people want. They, they actually don't want to think about instrumentation, which means like having the fewest number of projects they depend on in order to instrument their software. And that's what led to open telemetry. So I just want to help people understand the history of the project, including going back to 2015. Um, so that is important context. Um, are you like, 
for should the uh, observability stake absolutely unequivocally approve this? No, like, and I think it's fine if you don't. Frankly, we'll just keep on working. I mean, this project is going to be adopted regardless. The CNCF actually encouraged us to incubate the project um, because you know it would be a good thing or whatever, and that was kind of the goal. But honestly, like, I'm pretty convinced this is the right overall direction. But a broad telemetry project that's decoupled. That's those seem like the two important pieces. Tightly coupling it is bad. Narrow will be hard to adopt. Um, and that's what led us to the current design. I think a lot of the issues I'm hearing here have to do with interop with other observability projects, certainly including Prometheus. I would second what Ted said. We're extremely committed to figuring that out. It's just going to take work. Uh, and then the collector per se, which I just don't want it, you know, I personally like the collector. You might not, that's totally fine. I just wouldn't want to throw the baby out of the bathwater if you don't like the collector, because it's one part of a much larger project. And I don't think it makes sense to split it off into its own thing because it has so many tendencies itself on open telemetry, nor do I think it makes sense to reject open telemetry because you don't like that part because you just don't need to use it. So that's my two cents. I don't know if that's useful, but just from like, I feel like we're talking about existential charter stuff and that is the context for how the project was created. And the irony in my mind of us spending two years to basically comply with the CNCF guidance to create a broader surface and then being rejected because it's too broad is sort of beyond description, but like, but if that's how it is, that's how it is. But I just, I want to share that because that is how I see it. And on the flip side, right, like Honeycomb sat out, right, like we sat out open senses and open tracing, right, because there was not convergence, right, because there was not a clear roadmap for which of these two projects is going to, you know, be the future way that everyone is going to want to instrument with, right? And when open telemetry came along, right, like that was a sign to us of we should be developing and converging our SDKs in that direction, right? Like I think that that has a huge amount of power as opposed to people duplicating work, you know, writing their own proprietary SDKs in terms of people developing against open census or open tracing, right? And having to maintain these two parallel implementations, right? Like I think that there is a lot of value in what Ben is describing as kind of the unified SDK for instrumentation. And then, right, like the problem the collector is solving is a separate one, which is how do you configure that, right? How do you route the instrumentation once it's generated, right? And that's kind of the separate problem that is being solved is once you start doing this at scale, you want to configure multiple points that you're running to, you want to be able to do it at runtime, and suddenly that, that becomes a new set of considerations, right? That is now, that is unlocked from having the first set of, you know, let's get the baseline instrumentation standard taken care of let's have a protocol for communicating that instrumentation and that telemetry, and then let's have a routing layer, right? Like those are kind of the various layers of the stack that arise from each other, right? Like that, that, are, that are empowered by each other, but are not necessarily, you don't have to deploy it if it does, you know, if you have a simple app that only needs to write to one telemetry sync, you don't need the open telemetry collector, right? I just want to uh, jump in and agree with a, a point Liz make from uh, Datadog's perspective, we also sat out previous attempts at a lot of this and, and see telemetry as a wonderful path forward uh, in, in convergence in, 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 in telemetry and instrumentation. And, and, and just to reiterate again, you know, from AWS uh, with the distribution that we've rolled out based on, you know, all the work that we are doing in open telemetry and the whole community is, there is a tremendous amount of interest and adoption from the uh, customers, uh, you know, large and small. So, it really is an exciting time. And, and, and that's what, you know, customers are looking at. Yeah, I would like to point out the project does have clearly defined boundaries. Like we're, we're not attempting to create a, a backend or database specifically. We're entirely focused on solving this tricky problem of how would you let open source libraries natively instrument themselves and how do you let operators uh, have control over that telemetry pipeline? And so, I don't know, it, to, from my perspective, the, the project is pretty well scoped. Uh, and we have had to do a lot of design work up front to make sure that we're actually meeting these requirements because on the telemetry side, they are um, deeper requirements than if you were just trying to talk to one system, but that, that work feels like it's actually been going very well. So I just want to point that out, that it, it feels like it's been going well to me, having been involved in all this stuff from the beginning. Maybe also some feedback on like project reviews in general. I think we're mixing here two things when it comes to incubation. One thing is whether you like the design of a certain project or not. I mean, that's personal taste and people take different directions. 
on, on how they build things. I mean, I have four other six previous projects as well, where I'm not necessarily 100% on board uh, with the design, and I might have taken different design decisions. I'm not saying I'm doing this here, but like in general. One topic though that comes up, but I think that can be addressed by um, the open telemetry people is like, are there performance tests that exist? What are the current performance considerations and considerations regarding sta um, stability or the test suite and so forth? I think that's a valid point to make and also something to be answered by, by the project team, which I assume exists or um, can, can be made available. So that's the fair point, but also you can't, force a project to interact with um, other projects necessarily. You don't have this situation where it's like one approach to rule them all. You can make the recommendation, honestly, or you can make the recommendation you should work with those other projects in, in the industry, the rest of the wider industry. I think that's also when I look at some, like especially the first one, okay, if they go libraries are supposed to be not stable, then I think it's up to the open telemetry team to show like proper tests, quick proper performance testing of those libraries if they exist. Fine. Um, but they would have to sign it differently is an entirely different question. So uh, for everyone who's not following the chat, please follow the chat because uh, there is some synchronization usually going on. Um, I, I was trying to find the balance between letting this one run because once again, we have new people and I don't want to shut anyone down. On the other hand, um, I, I want to try and focus back a little bit on the due diligence document. So the intent behind trying to get uh, Bartek to, to, to write his concerns out or anyone else, um, is to is to detach the concerns from the rest of what we need to be doing as part of the due diligence um, so we can finally have a statement and a finished document which we can submit to the toc um, and i yeah no doesn't matter so um i agree with steve's point um that uh mandating from the outside of the project that any particular um uh, data model uh, must be used internally um, seems seems overly broad. Um, and I'm saying this as someone who, like literally the founder of Open Metrics, but yet I agree with my chair head on that this seems overly broad. So I would suggest uh, simply removing this or moving this to a different, I don't know, um, to your technical assessment or wherever, but not in the scope of that it, should or maybe an ITF sense must be revisited from your point of view. Are there any other points? Uh, I think uh, Steve or anyone else you actively um, disagree with. Um, of course, else. I'm on mute. Sorry. <laughs> go ahead. I was my my intention is to get the statement out have it locked in and then the rest of the discussion can just base on that and then we we make progress yeah i think my general comment would be many of these make claims but i don't see anything to back it up like this one um i don't know where this data is coming from or or even this one like the go uh, sdk right now is not stable so if that was true for like go uh, for java or net which both are Maybe that would be a bigger concern. Uh, and some of these I'm assuming are not tracked in like GitHub issues or what have you, where most of the work is happening. So I'm not necessarily sure where all the side conversations are occurring, but it's really hard to address feedback that is kind of like secondhand or third hand that's not being tracked openly in the community. So I guess there'd just be an ask for more transparency. We're trying to do this all in open source. Everyone's welcome to participate. If you find that's not the case, then there are code of conduct violations. Let's go address those. But otherwise, like ideally, this should all be on GitHub tracked in issues. And if there are beliefs that like users are, are dominating over vendors or what have you, like let's go have that conversation and go address it. But otherwise, it's I'm not sure what we can tangibly do with some of this feedback, uh, given that there's nothing to back up the claims. Right, sorry, real quick question on framing here. Is this process of like incubation or not, is it default pass or default allow? Neither. Sorry, default pass or default fail? <laughs> um, it's neither. I can tell you from experience from getting projects both into graduated and incubating stage that it is 
long and tedious, um, but it there is no predetermined outcome unless Amy starts disagreeing violently because she's on the phone. <laughs> I mean, I am on the call, but uh, I was mostly just giggling quietly as far as like the, there is no set path as far as like when a project is ready for incubation and what right, the right. outcome is. Is that, right. is that more of your well, question? It's, it's more like what conversation are we having here? Or is like the one team trying to convince the other ones to let them in? Or is the, the CNCF ad trying to like convince that like prove the thing isn't ready? Right, like, what is the argument being made? Like, what is where is the conversation going? Because it seems to me that uh, uh, a lot of people believe it is default pass, and a lot of other people believe it's default fail, and there's some tension here. Like, like, who's doing the convincing? Uh, and that's interesting to point out. I I think the issue is more that this was seen or at least told to us that this was this was a technical review of the project and as steve is mentioning it feels like a number of the things here are more uh, like opinions or things that don't feel like act actionable from a technical perspective that's this why we're kind of circling back to that i think that we can definitely have like a broader discussion but it feels weird to have that broader discussion in the context of like a technical review that, that sorry no that statement feels a little bit unfair so um let me just i don't know if you saw this document let me link it um it's the actual long form uh i i would agree if you say that uh, the summary is is not phrased neutrally that is a fair point to make um i i would not agree with any statement uh, implying that this is all uh, basically happening in in a vacuum. Um, so I don't know, uh, Ben, if you if you saw that statement or the, sorry, that document. Uh, may, I, maybe it has uh, iterated since I last looked at it. Um, the the main my main goal was to just make sure that if there's a technical review of the project that's going out, it it can certainly have opinions about like the project. I don't want to say it doesn't, but I want to make sure that it, it also like reflects what the project is or is trying to do. Uh, when I last looked at it, it had things saying like we were like there were lots of forks of the project and, and things like that. And so my main goal is to just make sure that that it's actually reflective of a, a judgment of like what we're actually trying to accomplish. Yeah, but yeah, so I think just... the key thing is. Right, for the fork here, just, sorry to just reply directly to this to the fork thing, which we, we literally just closes, and I don't see this in this list of uh, of, of remaining concerns. So I, I do think that, like I, again, I would agree with Steve that this needs some sharpening and and uh, sourcing. And so, for example, uh, Liz's comment uh, is actually is absolutely uh, correct that there should be a link. I, I know by happenstance, of course. Frederick from uh, Kubernetes Stick Instrumentation and also a Prometheus team mentioned that uh, that's why he stopped using the Go library because he had too many uh, who, too many memory leaks. But I don't know if he ever filed an issue or not. Yeah, we can't um, fix them unless we know about them. So like we're yeah, happy no, to fix it. We want to fix it. I agree. I agree. Uh, so yeah. like I know this has some backing in reality, but I have never taken a look myself. But I'm just trying to get back on track. So for the intents and purposes here would uh should we just put an action item for bartek to to actually point to a specific thing because then you can just take it off and we can also remove it from this uh, from this overall list in uh, assuming that the rest of the issues or concerns or whatever are resolved richard, richard can i request an uh, that bartek file an issue on the yes, open telemetry go um uh, repo but, but Yes, exactly. That was a was a suggestion. So we Thank you. just a second. And also for looking at stability, we should be looking at Java.net or one of the SDKs that's actually declared that it's 1.0. Right? Yeah. Go hasn't done that. Yeah. Yes. Oh, we'd like the feedback. Yep. Definitely. But yes, oh yeah. We we totally still have the feedback. <laughs> oh okay. Okay. I I'm, think one other thing that might be helpful. Uh, Richie is, I don't know if there are, and going back to Peter's original question, like what, what are we doing here? Is this a pass fail? Uh, I think maybe an open question is 
what is the goal of the due diligence document? So my understanding is there are certain criteria that the CNCF TOC has dictated or specified, maybe dictated is the wrong word, uh, that is in bold. There are different section headers in this doc and the goal is to respond to them. My understanding is that SIG observability's goal is to review those and either say, yes, we agree or no, here's our feedback in that area. So I believe the goal is to address section by section and try to point out where there might be concern or non-consensus. Yes, the, 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 the issue which I was trying to solve, and I thought we had uh, agreement last time that, that we, are, we are trying this approach, is um, to just detach uh, a bulk of concerns out of the out of the normal document course as happened just now um, we are basically going in circles on a lot of discussions which are super interesting on a technical level and in particular as new voices come in and voices i personally value um, that that just makes it more interesting but that doesn't solve that we don't make progress in the actual document so the attempt my, my pro yeah yeah propose some production mm -hmm. stability because the project is that big which was a bit for another one to have more production users than just three, because like three would be like specific to like maybe a very small subset of the project. But if you're concerned about certain areas, for us to have specific interviews and, and like more of those projects, sub projects, like if, if go is one of the concerns here. Because the standards, a lot of the, the CNCF rules are for projects that are obviously smaller in scope historically. But that would be a fair proposal to get production users for all of the major components would be a recommendation which then can put into interviews. I think that might be helpful here. I didn't get your point, sorry. Hello. So one of the criteria for incubation is to have three production users. Like three production users for a project that is that big might just like be Java only. If you want it for like all of the major like language instrumentation, that would be a fair recommendation and a fair statement to say you want to have production users for all the major components they are facing, or all the major languages, or all that have reached 1.0. Which is but actually what's not stable. That's a, that's a fair yeah, question. That's a fair. That's, a, that's a fair question to the open telemetry, right? Like you, the scope is so big that if I mention sample, it's already you know part of open telemetry. If I if I mention anything about telemetry, it's scoped to the open telemetry, and uh, that's kind of the problem with the scope, and uh, it's just hard to work with, and. I mean, this is only showing this 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 kind of problem. And again, some recommendation is is what we discussed is that maybe we should uh, put incubation um, kind of label on on tracing part. But I I, I heard there is like uh, yeah, you are not agreeing with that approach. Um, all maybe we should put a separate kind of stages, you know, on collector, separate on SDK, separate or spec. Um, we can definitely work with that and improve this process. It would be much, much easier, right, to, to think about, even for users. But wasn't the part, are we doing that for other projects? Like, we didn't do that for Open Metrics. That's not the case for Prometheus. Like, there are client libraries in Open Metrics right now that are not stable. We didn't decouple the project and say Open Metrics is not ready for incubation. So I guess I'm having a hard time following that argument. Like the project's going to continue to evolve and will continue to become like more stable in different areas. And for larger projects like a Kubernetes or an open telemetry, there will always be a certain amount of components that are, have not reached that maturity level yet, but there's a well-defined path to get there. There is a definition yep. for it. There's a GC, there's a technical steering committee, like there's processes in place to mitigate all of those concerns. Yeah, and, and, well, and but yeah. Uh, as you saw, I mean, uh, even in the update that I compiled together, there is a path forward, very clear planning, as well as, you know, progress being made in all of these areas, right? So, sure, but this is like just small progress. This is like essentially like just movement and showing that this is moving. Today. Yes, but it's still not incubated kind of high bar of, of kind of. And incubation again means like a step towards graduation. And I talked about uh, about that with Chris. We talked um, like both with Richie and and kind of Ami as well. And you know there was this strong statement that we are not here talking about only incubation and let's swipe all all of other problems for graduation to later stage. No, it it should be like a a certain pause, certain break that we stop and think, hey, is this going to good direction? And I'm super surprised that you are saying there are so many successful users because I don't know any. 
and uh, and maybe we are in the bubbles but uh, i just want to point out that from my perspective from our perspective people who i talk to this is not that clear that it's going in the, the best direction and i, I think that this to... is highlighting something that's really interesting around kind of who is adopting this and who is being brought into the cloud native community yeah. like one of the, our kind of uh you know I understand this is being recorded, um, but like one of our customers is a large financial services company, right? I can't name them by name on a recorded call, but like they are coming into the cloud native community and adopting Otel, and they're not necessarily going to be in these kind of conversations with SIG observability, right? But they are very successfully adopting Otel as their strategy for getting for getting instrumentation, right? Like I worry that there's a disconnect between kind of the community base that we're serving, which is people who are looking to migrate legacy workloads onto cloud native workloads, and the set of people that this SIG is talking to, right? Like, from Honeycomb's perspective, right, like, I would easily say at least half of our deals now are people who are interested in using open telemetry to compare some shop vendors, to compare against Jaeger, right? Like, and it's really exciting, right? Like, so I think there's this weird cognitive disconnect where we just have communities that are not talking to each other. Maybe, maybe, right? But like, I know Alex, who is like VP of, uh, I think, JP Morgan, a kind of uh, engineering part, observability part, and he was actually into adopting tracing with the, uh, with Jager and, you know, kind of technology back then, but like a year ago on American Express, I think, company. And yeah, maybe you've seen his comments on, on kind of assessment doc, and he mentioned that the, it, like it's at this point there is no good path to use open telemetry because of those reasons so it's not like and yeah i would be curious like what makes those people that you refer um very happy about this path and what makes you know people i heard um not not very happy and okay i just want to one make one more point maybe it's unrelevant so uh, but i want to kind of leverage that okay i agree that this um production stability of open telemetry tracing part on go is can be kind of controversial but what i mean behind that is that you know we had open tracing client already for like i don't know four years or three and we suddenly moved to something worse and this is like kind of showing the, the direction right that uh, is not going in the direction that's my point here it's kind of this background and context also that matters uh, and I also think that because like one of the thing that uh, incubation means that you have users in production running this, if we go incubation without having like the logs part uh, or anything that around that part or on like the metrics like still in beta, I am kind of saying that like this would not meet the bar for incubation, the logs part only and like which which part of the project need to meet the bar to, to be incubation. That's That's more like the question I think. So that has been addressed, actually that was addressed by Liz last week, right? It is very common for projects to have things that are experimental, right? Like how else do you build components into a new project that isn't ready yet, right? Like you don't just deploy your production magically. Um, but actually, um, just because since we have Amy here as a resource, Amy, are there, is there anything you want to chime in to help us make sure we understand the scope of this review? I think the next steps here, like I, I like what Aloy is saying about like being able to have the, um, production users that TOC can interview um, because really next steps here are making sure that the project proposal comes in officially into um, CNCF. Right now we're kind of like a little out of um, uh, <laughs> out of order, a, a tiny bit out of order, but being able to make sure that the official paperwork is in so that we can get someone from TOC to be able to come and look at this. Um, that, that that seems like the, the valid next steps here. I think the recommendation is um, at least at this point, kind of orthogonal towards being able to help answer the questions that are currently on deck for incubation graduation. Um, and Liz, I see a bunch of things in chat. I'm happy to pass back to you as far as like um, other pieces to go on. And also just to synchronize, because I basically gave up on being able to pass this. We are already three minutes past officially. Uh, we'll probably run over as per usual to the full hour, but afterwards I have a hard cut. Um, just to onboard the people who uh, who haven't been here before, um, the initial suggestion for uh, to do a partial uh, due diligence of open telemetry uh, tracing um, was coming from Steve, I think, in October, but then that was taken back. So just for completeness, for the matrix uh, of overview of different adoptions, that's actually one of the action points which we had in the first call, if I remember correctly. And then uh, basically it, it was 
too complicated and intricate to 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 explode the n-dimensional matrix along all orthogonal dimensions. Uh, as such, we dropped this. Uh, I still think it would be super useful to uh, to have this. Um, as to the experimental part, because that keeps coming up. Um, for Kubernetes, there's a lot more stuff which is which is uh, which is in production than which is experimental. The the inherent thing, and I'm just reiterating the discussion which we had, I think at least two times in the in the context of this call or this due diligence, is that unless the signals are stable, it's hard to declare any components, collect or anything else uh, really stable. Because if the signal is changing you automatically must have some sort of more or less breaking up uh, upgrade path or you're locking yourself in uh, a lot. Uh, so you, you need to have at least a solid beta for, for a signal uh, before, before the rest of the thing uh, can, be, uh, can be considered super stable. Um, this is just a summary of what we walked uh, through the last two or three meetings, which we had in total. Um, and from end of last year, uh, just to, to get everyone on board. Um, Steve, should I take this as a request to, to basically not make that uh, statement from Bartek part of the document, but basically have those discussions in the detailed uh, bits and pieces of the, of the due diligence document? Is this, is this correct, this interpretation? So I think there's two options unless others have other suggestions. I think one is direct feedback in each of the sections because I believe that's what we're supposed to be doing here is addressing the individual sections. The second option is what Bartek did previously, which is create a separate Google Doc and attach that to this as well, like with like a link at the top of the doc that says additional information over here um, if it can't be folded into each of the sections. What do people think? I think both is fine as long as Bartek is okay with the with the form of representation of descent. Because uh, it also shouldn't be just hidden. I think that's also unfair. But um, I, I I'm fine with either. I, I deliberately don't have an opinion. I deliberately would like open telemetry as the uh, applicate applicating project um, to to say how they prefer it, but we can also try and do a call of consensus while in this call or I don't mind. So Steve, as you submitted, I take you as the as the person who, who leads this course. Yeah, I mean, I think personally in, in my mind, what is better is if it's possible to add direct feedback to how the, the bolded things for due diligence are not being met. That would be ideal in my mind. If that's not possible, or there's an overarching uh, bit of summary or feedback or what have you, having a separate doc that we can then reference to, I think is also acceptable. So that would be my recommendation. Okay, I, I'm totally fine trying to do this. In this case, I would reject uh, Bartex. Um, or no, I would not reject it. So people can comment on it and ask for clarification have an argument about the underlying things. So we so we get some substance to it, because uh, the underlying concerns won't, won't magically go away. So maybe we have this as a discussion piece, or maybe Bartik can move it into his other doc. And then next time we try, and I mean, we still have seven minutes, but uh, we try to go through, uh, through the rest and we can just start doing this now then if there's consensus on this. Sounds good to me. Do we want to use the seven minutes and try to make progress in some of yeah. the other areas? Yeah, Richard, I, I yes. think that would be a good thing. Okay, good. Uh, Bartik, you fine with this? I mean, yeah, yeah, we can we can move on. But I would I would kind of want to keep this statement so it's kind of verbose and visible. Uh, you know, just my recommendation, just what I had to do, and I spent lots of time on this. So, yeah, we can discuss. And this is why. I, I think I would like to propose how we do this in Prometheus team meetings there. Um, and obviously I'm explaining how we do this. We try to find consensus. If we don't find consensus, we find smaller pieces of possible consensus, find a consensus on those smaller pieces, and then uh, build a complete consensus, which you can currently see in point three of this document. Me trying to achieve this. 
And if we find that we cannot find consensus on it, uh, we note the dissent on, on the consensus. Or if there is too many voices which speak against and there is no rough consensus, then it's just kept as there couldn't be any consensus. So this is how, how it works with Prometheus team and has served as well in the past. Um, it seems reasonable, especially for what we did here for number three. Like I like the breakdown and trying to see if we can reach consensus. So fine with that. Okay. Okay. So let's try and I don't think we find consensus in this short time. Should we just walk through one or two comments so we get through those maybe? Uh, uh, sure. So I'm, I'm assuming this is related to the doc. So I don't, I'm not sure we can address this one. Bartok, are you okay no, no, if we move on no. to the next comment? No, I was already down in, in, in section four, but we can, all, I mean, it's, sorry, I'm just kind of, I would have, yeah, it doesn't matter. We, so maybe let's walk through the actual concerns, uh, get Bartik to, to, to put meat to where or non-meat reprodu uh, reproduction. Uh, so we can, we can, we can have this on firmer legs next time. Do I understand correctly that we should not consider Go as part of the, of the complete thing and we should only be looking at .NET and Java within the context of open implementations? If you're talking about stability specifically, so only Java and .NET have announced stability for tracing at this time. Uh, Python, okay. Erlang, I think are in RC. Both of them are in RC. Someone keep me honest. <laughs> I believe that's true. Go is, is shortly behind. So when yeah. Go declares 1.0, which I think will be in a, a month or so, then we could look at it for stability, but I wouldn't do it until they are until they claim that it's ready to be reviewed for that. Yep. Okay. Okay. Then in this case, I, I think it's fair to just uh, like we still should get or or Bartik and I can take this. We can ask Frederick to uh, to uh, to file an issue. Um, I hear he has some something going on with Comprof, so maybe he can help quite nicely. Um, yeah, and then for the intents and purposes of this, um, Go will not be considered. I think that's a fair statement. Um, to, to make. For this, I don't see any. Uh, Steve, can you go up again a little bit? So we keep yep, uh, sure. jumping up and down uh, in, the, in, in divergent directions. Okay, no concerns here, apparently, no concerns here, no concerns here, no concerns here. So we good? Should I go to number four? Uh, number four in this. Uh, so, Morgan, your statement is that the collector should not be considered part of the main open telemetry usage, um, and that it's that the specification, as in Signal, and the SDK is the actual uh, focus area. Correct? No, I, I was just responding to a comment that appears to be saying that the collector is demotivating and distracting work from the spec, which is not true. Yeah, that is not true. Okay, so your reply. Okay, then your reply is, you have enough resources to do everything. At the yes. Same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, which is what is what is in progress right now. Okay. okay. I didn't realize we were here, Richie. Sorry, I was in the wrong spot. Yeah, no worries. I I, I mentally jumped back and forth. Uh, of course, I just wanted to at least get those out of the way because we will not be making major progress in the document anyway. So at least we can try and get some meat onto the concerns. So we have a better starting point next time. To do in Okay, Lissa's comment is fair, but will not be resolved right now. B putting on my, my non-chair head for a second, I also would prefer more um, a different distribution of complexity, but chair head on again. 
So uh, yeah, I just the comment here is there's only one data model that we use for each signal type in the collector. There is nothing inside the collector that is vendor specific, right? Yep. You have exporters, which are clearly done through a separate API that are in separate repos that can come in to export data to an endpoint. But those exporters adapt from the core open telemetry data model yep. to whatever data model the exporter author wanted to use. A, sorry for opening the Pandora's box with my side comment. Uh, oh, I no, no I, I'm replying. Uh, sorry, I'm replying to this next one, Richie. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Then, okay. Uh, sorry sorry for the confusion. I was talking about the inherent system complexity. No, 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 no. This was the APIs yeah, and data models. Yeah. Networking person. So I always care about the state. Um, Okay. Yeah, I mean, oh, I flipped around. What I meant here, right, is like, I, I, I know how, how collector works nowadays, right? And that this inside collector, there's like a single API that all receivers and exporters have to implement, right? But the problem is I want to use a certain vendor, which is, for example, big like Data Hub, Splunk, or something like that. And, you know, a user now has to use some kind of vendor specific API because those probably not yet uh, support the OTLP that core provides, right? Or maybe, I don't know, like that's that's my impression, right? That that there are this specific, so the, the specific vendor plugin has to be installed. So you need to use Contrib or distribution. And then it is a complex stuff that you have to do as user and not a vendor applying to the OTLP or like whatever standard so, is for now, right? Yeah, so so first off, there are many vendors that do just natively use OTLP. And my sense is a lot of them are migrating in that direction. I know Amazon uses oh, it. That's amazing, yeah. Yeah, and, and my hope is actually more and more of them do it. I, I think I, when I was leaving Google, there was talk about using it internally uh, for their cloud ops products and others. So I, I expect that to become more common. Um, the, the exporters are there mostly to adapt. Just, just to you. So if that is happening, do we need the distributions that, you know, all this kind of collector? Um, it's a fair question. No, the, the distributions is a fair question. I, ex I suspect that we're going to need distributions long term just because <clears throat> vendors will want their own fork, even if it's just a snapshot, like even if there are zero changes to it, just so that they can make a quick change and, and meet their customers SLAs for support. Uh, for reference, like I, I know we don't know each other super well. I was at Google until January. Now I'm at Splunk. Google, the plan there is not to have their own distribution. They're using the pure OSS one, no special distribution. It, that's really good, and I was part of that. Splunk has their own because we're pulling in some older stuff until OpenTelemetry replaces it. Eventually, ours will be pure OpenTelemetry. We'll probably still have it just because we have customers with like very expensive SLAs. If we have to fix something to make SLA, we're going to do it there and then backport it. But, but well, like, AWS also has a pure OSS uh, distribution. You know what is offered is support. From yeah, and there's no need to have vendor support here to do this. So OTLP is supported end to end through all the client libraries. Support it, sending directly to the collector today, and open source standards like Jaeger, Zipkin, uh, yep. and hopefully eventually entirely Prometheus will be supported as well. That's the goal. So like you don't need a vendor receiver in the collector. The primary reason for vendor things is for exporters for a backend that hasn't adopted to OTLP yet. There are lots of vendors that have been around for a decade. They can't move that fast. So if you don't provide a path forward, they can't consume this data, which is, is not good experience for anyone anyway. Yep. So I, I think a design principle of open telemetry is extensibility and having vendor specific exporters is, is completely viable as well as having distributions because from an AWS standpoint, we want to provide performance and security guarantee to our customers and we can only provide that while pointing to a specific set of bits that we tested. And just to point out, Kubernetes has distributions and you know, CNCF has been happy with that for a while now. All right, I think we're at time. So maybe out of uh, respect for everyone, we should probably call it here and circle back next week. Yeah, we actually way over. Usually it should stop at 50, but... Um, Interesting discussion. I really like it. Yet, uh, let's try and, and actually finish the document next time. Um, see you all in a week. See ya. Thank you. Thank you, Richie. See ya. Thank you, Richie. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye, all.